Hi, I'm Cecily Callen, and I'm part of the crew here at Ion Productions. Thanks for watching our shows. My favorite is innovation segment. What's yours? I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching the innovation segment of Ion Business here in Orange County. And with me tonight is Deepu Ghosh, and he is the CEO of Hempatic, and that's Hempatic with a Q. Deepu is also the winner of TCVN or Tech Coast Venture Network 8 Survivor, and that is an event where over a hundred companies compete to win a prize for being the most innovative and the most new product. I want to welcome Deepu. Deepu, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. So um, let's break it down for folks a little bit. What is Hempatic really quick? And then we'll step back and how exciting it is to win a contest. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Hempatic is a company we formed to um, provide software that will figure out how bad somebody's liver disease is. So mm -hmm. basically, we quantify the severity of liver disease. So where are the metrics? So how, where is it getting that information from? We um, scan the patient using nuclear medicine, which is a standard technique. And then we get those images, and we analyze. Our software analyzes those images mm -hmm. and produces a number, kind of like a blood pressure number or a glucose number. It's, it's a liver number. Mm -hmm. We call it the hepatic index. Per, is that going to be a trademarked statement? Hepatic index? It, hepatic is trademarked. We have the trademark in process, yes. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. um, let me understand a little bit where you are in the process. I'm assuming this re requires a substantial FDA approval. Where are you in that whole process? We are planning to submit for FDA clearance um, probably next month. Okay, and I'm mm -hmm. guessing that the TCVN win will help? It will definitely. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about what that experience was like. I mean, you went up against 120 plus people. Um, and uh, walked away with $25,000. That's no minor feat. Well, it, I wasn't expecting to. In fact, I didn't prepare much for it. I did, um, I knew don't, I had to do Don't believe him, but anyway. <laughs> I, well, I did prepare for my 30-second pitch because that's the first thing I got to right, do, but I didn't prepare right. the rest of it. There uh, you go. And um, when I was selected, or one of the 10 semifinalists, that's when I got scared because I thought this may be real and I may actually have to compete before it was just fun. Be careful what you ask for. Yes, indeed. So, but it got my juices going, you know, being in the semifinalist. So when it narrowed down to the 10, I started preparing <laughs> right there for my, That's what exciting. am I going to say? I just got the bullet points out and, and then when I was in the f top three, that was really scary because now there's a lot at stake and I have one in three chance of winning. So as the winner of Survivor 8 for the Tech Coast Venture Network, um, you basically went through a process, as I understand it, where you start, you stand in line effectively and you do a short pitch. That's right. And everybody comes in behind pitch. you and then investors that are potential investors and other um, judges make a decision on whether or not you're product is exciting, innovative, and potentially fundable. Is that correct? That's right. They eliminate and pick 10 people out of everybody presenting. Everybody gets a chance. If you show up that night, you get a chance to pitch as long as you're a startup company. And there were 120 of those. We pitched, and they picked 10 semifinalists. So when you went to the 10 final, uh, semifinalist group, what's next for you? Well, then we got a little time, and we were all asked to prepare three minutes of presentation and pitch that to the judges, uh, which we did. You know, and then they picked three finalists. So what was the input that you get back? I mean, I know how these things work. They're pretty critical, and they're also pretty supportive as well. So what, what was your biggest takeaway from the judges that night that you need to do to go forward? Well, the, um, the main thing that stood out to me was their focus on the business plan. And you know, our business plan was to make the purchase decision really easy. You know, we were gonna give away the software for free for two months, let the people use it, if they like it, if it makes them money, then they have to buy it. Okay, and, and they supported that? Did they like that model? 
I think they did. Good, mm -hmm. good, because they paid you twenty-five thousand right. dollars, right? What else did you get? I hear that there are other support uh, mechanism to help you accelerate your business. So, for the audience to understand a little bit about what the TCVN Survivor Eight is all about and what you have looking forward with the support you're going to get from them. I think the main thing for us is the publicity, the name recognition that is building up. Um, we get it. Uh, connections with the venture uh, community and the angel investors uh, so to us that's the most valuable because we are we're gonna need more funding going forward and this is our first outside money besides our own investment and it's just tremendous so for those that don't know um, it generally starts out friends and family investors people that believe you and trust that you're gonna do the right thing then the angels step in, which are what are called the high-risk money people. They're the first people to come in line and give you some cash. They generally take a little bit more of the business. And then the third row is the venture capital group. So I just wanted to make sure for those that don't understand it, what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, so what's next for you? Well, our f focus for the short term is to get the FDA clearance for the product, mm -hmm. uh, get some beta sites going so people start getting familiar with the hepatic software. And um, as soon as we have the FDA clearance, we will be offering it for sale. So if you were to go in um, the next two years, where do you want to be? I'd like to have a 1,000 hospitals using the hepatic software. And I want to wish you luck in that, and thank you so much for coming in. I thank appreciate you, Kevin. it very much. Thank you. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you've been watching the innovation segment for Ion Business of Orange County, and we've been talking with Deepu Ghosh, the winner of the Tech Coast Venture Network Survivor 8. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Brandon McNeil for Ion Productions, and make sure and keep an eye out for the Ask Dino show, the innovation segment, and the new Cutting Edge Facets TV. I'm Kev McDonald with Ion Business in Orange County, and with me today is Brian Steen, the CEO of CISPRO USA. Brian has been with CISPRO for 27 years, and he was also recently voted Start IT Magazine CEO Visionaries of 2013. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, in Kevin. with us today. I really appreciate nice it. Um, first of all, let me say that um, it must be really something to be the CEO of one of Orange County's uh, largest companies and, and being a survivor in the ERP world. So for those that don't know what ERP is, let's break down a little bit for what CISPRO does. Sure. So uh, Enterprise Resource Planning is the acronym for that. And so we, we accommodate um, anything a company needs to run their business, accounting, distribution, manufacturing, and anything allied around that. So we've been in business over 35 years. Uh, we're one of the grand old dads of the ERP business, and we compete in a space against the huge multi-billion dollar companies like Microsoft. And um, the unique thing about CISPRO is that um, we've always had one product, so it's one DNA um, from inception was the same product that has evolved over all the years unlike our competitors that have been in acquisition mode and then taken multiple product lines and merged them all into one. Trying to plug things together, right. Plug right. Them into one. So ours mm -hmm. has always been the same uh, base DNA all the way through. So definitely one of the advantages of the product. Far better integration right. Yeah, right. at that point. So I understand you have like 14,000 to 15,000 clients. Is that accurate? Right, 15,000 clients worldwide. Okay. Uh, we have them in 60 different countries. And um, we, we sell through a reseller channel throughout mm -hmm. the world. 1500 partners and um, it's very successful and, and we're still growing today so well having been in Orange County in the business community for a long time I hear amazing things about the culture at CISPRO um, and that employees really love to work there so if you can help me understand for those that are trying to grow companies today what do you think makes CISPRO different to the rest of the world I, I think the focus is definitely on the culture and um, it, it's to people that have come back to the company it's like they're coming back home it's a family uh, they feel they're part of a family, we treat everyone the same way, but I think the big thing is that we expect everyone to treat the fellow employee as you would your customers. Mm -hmm. So the person across the desk from you, you need to treat them as you would a customer, you want respect, and it builds that culture internally. Um, and people that have left, uh, second, third time have come back and said this is finally home, it's not greener on the other side, which is an right. interesting uh, fact. Well, and I know that, that that's really important in today's um, growth market as well because the millennials in particular are a lot about culture and it's difficult right. to have a culture people enjoy and, and and still be productive so how do you balance that challenge of being friendly and 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 relationship oriented and still getting things done right I think the key is that um, we don't sit in ivory tower so I mean I'm 
on the phones, talking to customers. I can do tech support. I can go in and visit customers in a sales environment. We, we get our hands dirty. Um, in some of the large companies, and if you, you're buying an ERP system, you'd never talk to a Bill Gates if you're buying a system. You'd never get to him. Um, companies at the CEO level can call me and we can have a chat at the CEO level, and oftentimes you win deals because that's the basis we start from, where companies have started out in the garage today, you know, 25 years later, they multi-million dollar companies, and they have that same culture, so they see the same culture in how CISPRO operates mm -hmm. in the same way. So our doors are open, anyone can come and talk to us, and I think people just feel that that's the culture they want, you know, which is very different to the huge multinational type corporate environment. And I'm guessing you get a whole lot of word of, word of mouth referrals absolutely, too as well. Absolutely. So for those that don't understand what an ERP does, I mean, I understand that it's a management tool, and I clearly understand it, it's part of my job, right. but for those that are watching, you know, give us a little idea of where you plug into the world of business. Right. So our product replaces um, the lower end product. So if you're running QuickBooks and Peachtree and you get to the next level, CISPRO is probably the next level you would go to. Uh, a bit more disciplined, but we manage the inventory side of it, we manage all your accounting side, and then of course all the manufacturing. So our strength is really in the manufacturing. Uh, we've always played in that manufacturing space. But we then have the outliers where we have companies like hotel management uh, companies that use our back-end accounting for like 30 different hotels, even in the Orange County area. Mm. Uh, Outrigger Hotels is one of them, and there's hotels around the Ontario airport. Um, and they still use our back-end accounting. So we offer a full solution for all those areas, whether you're in accounting or distribution, accounts payable, cash book, GL, then your sales orders, your purchasing, and, and very strong inventory control with forecasting, and then the full-blown manufacturing. We then have supplementary modules like uh, warehouse management, barcoding, uh, quality control systems okay. um, that then start filtering around and full-blown CRM. So, so, it's a total so basically solution. it is a total solution. I was about total to say, solution. it's a very, very rare total solution. Right. And totally integrated. Yeah, Because it came from that base DNA that right. you talked about early right. on. Right. And well, we have a mechanism in place where it's very easy to integrate. We're on the .NET framework, and we, in fact, we're one of the very early .NET players, and we were a poster child for Microsoft in the early days where they touted at one of their shows that we were a poster child because we until you realized you stuff were, yeah. in, in .NET. They didn't even realize what they could do with .NET. <laughs> until they realized you were better than they were at exactly it. Exactly, right? at the time. And so very <laughs> yeah. easy to develop stuff with our pl platform in place where uh, users can go and physically write their own little applications and use mobile devices to very easily access the data and, and do input forms on multiple devices today. So very easy to integrate other products using the .NET framework and calling web services, accessing our data as well. So it just makes, makes it a quite very flexible too. solution yeah. from that standpoint. Yeah. Quite a bit more customizable than your, right. your classic proprietary in-house right. type of product. Uh, one of the nice things on the customizable stuff is that you can embed VB scripts into your screens, therefore mm -hmm. change the logic of how a screen works. And you can download a new port, new version a month or two later, and you have not corrupted the modification you did. So I understand you have a pretty incredible things. renewal rate too. Um, what right. do you think's behind that? percent retention rate. That's amazing. Uh, on, re on renewals. Yeah. Um, I think it's part of the, the customer service we provide to our customers, um, the flexibility in the product, and, and the product is constantly changing. Um, the weekly updates, monthly new ports, uh, new features, so it's constantly updating and customers who go to the product don't have to change. I mean, the customers have been with us 27 years, started at a four-user system today, they're hundred-user system. So as they've grown, ha as they're going to acquisition mode, the product has always been there for them. So I Got think it. that's the, the strength of, and the beauty of the product line. So where do you see yourself in five years of murder three, let's say, because technology is a little shorter term, but I mean, what is the vision for continuing to grow um, beyond just doing things right, which is what it sounds like you're doing right now? I, I think, um, you know, as the market morphs, we have a good platform in which to address that, which is mobile is now the big piece. We have a, a very solid mobile piece that's just uh, been released recently. Um, and it's device agnostic, so you can run across all platforms, and you can develop on that in the same way you can customize your normal workstation screen. You can do that on the device as well. Just like the phone with your contacts, you can add fields and remove fields. You'd be able to do that to the actual application as well. So mobile is definitely where it's going. Cloud offering is there as well, so we see more uptake on cloud, mm -hmm. although the ERP space is still a little bit slow on, on traction, and we're not seeing the huge accounts. We're seeing the little startups uh, the one and two users wanting yeah. to go that way because they don't have the money to invest. But Building the larger guys, infrastructure, sure. are, and it's mainly about infrastructure, are still very nervous about that. So we see uh, cloud um, growing. Um, we are adding new modules. We're looking at marketplaces and, and getting to different verticals. And that gets us to the different verticals we, we play in. 
So we play in five or six different verticals. Food is very big. Okay. Um, medical devices, electronics, equipment manufacturing, fabrication, job shop, uh, vehicle manufacturing. Uh, but food is, is a great one because um, everyone has to eat. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and there's just stuff more people, and, uh, which means more food. Right. And, and we have a little showroom at our office. And uh, you think you're going to store sometimes and buying stuff because just a sample from all our users and lots of food. For instance, Chol Krug Winery, Mondavi Winery. We have wine. We have um, rum manufacturer out of Barbados, which is part of Remy Cognac, Mount mm -hmm. Gay Rum. Nestle chocolate chip cookies that are used in baking. Um, and there's just such a myriad of food companies. There are probably 60, 70 different chocolate manufacturers that use our product wow. today. So, yeah. so you do have verticals big. within verticals even. Is what yeah, and there's like. subs within that. So, right. So, you know, we will focus on looking at different verticals and getting to little niches in, in some of these areas. And that's where we see the future in, in specializing a lot of these little verticals and then getting sub-verticals as well. So well that's fantastic. Trying to own those spaces. So I want to step back a little bit. From what I understand, you immigrated to the United States from South Africa. Right. Is that accurate? Um, and you know, there's, there's always that positive immigrant story that people need to hear. So tell me a little bit about your beginning here in the United States, sure. if you could. So I ran a software company in South Africa. I used to go and write um, systems when standard packages did not run, did not work for them. So I was already in the, in the space. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cispro is a, a South African-based company, and I got the rights to distribute for the Americas. And so I brought the product across oh. uh, in the days where there was very few products out there. Um, that were qu fully integrated. There were lots of little products that were just freestanding, but no integration. Freestanding accounting, a freestanding manufacturing, nothing integrated. And we really brought it to the marketplace, and today we, you know, in the top two or three of the, in the tier two space. So um, there was an opportunity to, to do that. I, I got that opportunity and started the company here in, in Costa Mesa, and uh, we've grown ever since. We've never had a layoff. That's an incredible um, story. And we've been very successful all the way through. Never had a layoff you know, in 30 years right, almost. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, what do, you, what do you believe that's from? Is that good forward planning? Is it, is it a, I mean, what do, you, what do you really, that's hard to imagine. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we've always been busy, so we've always been running very lean. Um, mm -hmm. in, in the days of the, the economy really being down um, and certain pockets of the market because we're national, which is very different to just being a localized environment and we're national. So certain pockets of the country were stronger than others. Mm -hmm. So we, still, we always had sales. Um, we have a recurring maintenance fee and that helped us sail through some of the bad months as well. But mm -hmm. thereafter, the economy picked up and we were still doing good. So we never had an excess number of employees, which our competitors did, and they just laid all those people off and they tried to get back to lean mode again mm -hmm. and then started hiring and hiring again. So we've always run pretty lean. Um, I think we utilize our resources very efficiently. And uh, we're in growth mode now, in fact. It so also sounds growing. like you have a bit of a commitment to your staff, too. So yeah. you're not going to be quick to cut someone no. where someone no. else would. And, I, and you know, most I can of feel our managers have been around 15 years, and that's yeah. part of the culture that people yeah. have been in. They feel that's home. And um, so we wouldn't just cut for the sake of cutting to cut costs. We'd rather take the hit ourselves and keep them because, you know, you're going to get rid of a person with 10 years' experience. It's a huge cost to go reemploy again loyal and, and train are, someone. Yeah, loyal employees are very hard to find today. Right. And yeah. I think in the, in the type of product we sell, you know, there's a two-year learning curve at least, and you still don't know the project is so huge. Um, so, you know, you just don't want to fire people for the sake of firing to cut costs. We'd rather take that and, and educate them and learn more about the product. And so those gave us lean times where we could actually get better education going within mm -hmm. the company and make these people stronger. So it sounds like you've, I mean, you won this visionary award recently, and it sounds like you've been seeing the vision of the future for 30 years because right. you, you came over here with something that, wasn't a big deal yeah. at the time and, and took a real chance. Um, for those that are in the world of entrepreneurship today and trying to think about doing something, I mean, what do you, what do you believe is one of the key formulas or, or key components to the formula that makes you successful yeah, every day? I think, honestly, um, you know, the cards are on the table. We don't sell a solution that's not going to work. Uh, we've never had a lawsuit against us for selling stuff that is vaporware, um, keeping to our values. Uh, and our principles, and I think that's number one. And creating a culture where people want to work for us, um, and as far as where the market goes to the future, I mean, just being on top of it, and, and I mean, we, we're fairly conservative as well, so we're not going to take those huge risks that put us in a different position. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the, the road forward, and just anticipating where the market's going with the, the modules and the feature set that customers need. So how do you get through those moments where it's a little more stressful than it is the day before. I mean, because I know as a person who runs a business myself, there are moments where I'm just going, wow, is this really worth it? Um, 
But, you know, how do you get, because I'm imagining at your point in the, in the hierarchy that your days can get pretty rough. What do you do? Right. What's your mechanism to, to cope with all of that? So I just have a very high stress level. So, you know, it doesn't phase me. Um, it has to be really critical where I really start stressing on some of these things. So I, I'm very calm, and I think being calm about it and taking in your stride um, is, is the key to, to not worrying about that stress factor um, and on a day-to-day -day basis and also being able to delegate the stuff as you need so that you can take the time on the important pieces and let the, the other stuff and not sweat it on the small, small things. So let me to go down that road a little bit. I know Joey Benedretti pretty well. Um, he's the president of CISPRO right. USA um, and someone I have a lot of respect for too. And I remember talking with him at one point a few years back about how it is true that you really do trust the subordinates and the people that and your peers. So you have to trust, right? right? And, and that's the hardest thing to do, right. but when you do it, everybody works better. So right. it sounds like your culture in general is to trust the people that you put in the right role that they're going to do their gig, right? Right, and it's teamwork. Yeah. And you'd expect that when you delegate that, the manager's going to pick up and, and run with it and get it executed. And that's typically what happens. Um, and when there are problems, we triage multiple managers and not just leave it to one manager. We get multiple managers involved, so there's a, a touch point at different areas, so someone else is going to pick it up in case someone drops the ball to some degree. There's an always a catch net on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that, that tends to work pretty well. So what are your biggest challenges as far as d running uh, a business, for example, in the state of California? I know the regulations could be pretty rough, and, and I don't want to get too political, but, I mean, you know, for those that, that are out there considering um, where you do business, how are you so successful in what I consider to be a pretty tough place to do business? Yeah, I mean, the cost of doing business are definitely costlier yeah, than other states where you don't have state, a, a state taxes. Um, also, we get hit with some of the other pieces, but I think it's just it, it's one of those things where anyone in a startup. I mean, I would start up again today, probably in the same place because it's the you know the air is great, the mm -hmm. um, the weather's what you want. As against the East Coast now, who's dying with the ice and the snow. Of course, they can't even move. So yeah. it's another day in paradise, and I think that's where you look at it. another day in paradise, and um, you just got to deal with the issues as they come through. Definitely, we could um, help. It, it could be more helpful with the different. Um, the state being leaner and, and easy to work with and um, reducing some costs because it is costly, which pushes up your labor rate. And some of the issues we have is finding good resources. Salaries become high, mm -hmm. pushes your, you know, your expenses up, and that, that is an issue that we've got to deal with. As yeah, against going to, to the mid-country where your rates are low, and we find that in competing uh, where labor rates are very low in the Midwest, as against our labor rates, yeah. So oftentimes you have to really discount your rates to get a deal when you're going you know, across the country. And um, that hurts. Yeah. So it certainly does. Yeah, we find the same thing being in tech. Right. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of competition push down, push up in rates and push down in the talent availability because Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat right. and, every, and all these people are absorbing everybody. And they're paying just ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah. If you had to start again today, would you do it? And what would you do differently? Um, if I started out today, I definitely would start with a, a board of directors and have an advisory board that you could, um, you know, run things by. I think in the early days, we didn't do that and we never had the luxury of an advisory board and, and running things against a group of people who had much more experience than we did. We learned the hard yeah. way. So I, I do sit on a couple of CEO roundtables and those are very good because it's a signing board to throw issues at and, you know, what's, what's keeping you up at night, discuss it and ten people give your input and you may be right, they may be wrong, but at least you get some good input to work with. So that would be the first thing I would start with. The second one is that we've grown organically and I'll probably look at getting funding, uh, starting something else again, because it just it's a slower, a, a slower approach. Yeah, that, that is true. Organic versus getting some cash infusion, right. do some marketing, right. hire that higher end talent, right? right? Those right. things. Right, get the higher end talent, which is always the case of, well, you've got to keep the salaries down there if you're not going to get that very expensive person. Right. And that expensive person could be a make or break. So it's 50-50. It's, you, know, you just don't know. So someone coming from a different culture could destroy your culture um, from a large corporate environment. And of course, they're going to be higher priced. They may make a big difference, but they may not. Right. So it's so one of those things you've got to give it a try. Let me ask one like, last question. On your roadmap, what's the most exciting thing you have coming, if I can ask? I think there's this, uh, a slew of products coming out this year that are going to be quite exciting for us. Okay. Um, over the years, we've developed things. We've won the Green Award. We're coming out with an optimizer that helped um, cut shape manufacturers, reduce the, the inventory, um, help them save costs. So we're looking at those different things that can cut costs for, for people 
and be innovative in the way they go. So there's a handful of items on the drawing board. Fantastic. So if the public wants to work with your fantastic company, how do they get in touch with you? Our website is uh, www.cispro.com, S-Y-S-P-R-O.com. I want to thank you for coming. I really Kevin, appreciate, thank you. It. appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you've been watching Ion Business in Orange County. You can reach me at Kevin at practicallyinvisible.com. That's Kevin at practicallyinvisible.com. And you can find us at Ion Business. That's Ion Business.com. Thank you.